Well, um, normally, uh, when I prepare for, for my characters, I do like a lot of backstories. Um, sometimes maybe two, or three pages of backstory, and um, I just try to get as much history and layer as, as layers as possible. But for for this role, I just um, I took Carmack's uh, lead and left everything blank. It just didn't matter who he was, mm -hmm. where he came from. We don't know what happened, doesn't matter. D nobody cares. The reality of the fact is we're in this situation and um, I just kept it like that. And you know, as far as me coming in for such a uh, short time, you know, um, Vigo and, and Cody and John, the atmosphere that they had was just so conducive, so healthy and just such a great working environment. It made it so easy for me just to come in and do what I do. Well, working on this film, I mean, you, you said you, you, know, you didn't do a lot of research into it, but you know, psychologically, how do you get into it? I mean, you know, I guess it was absolutely as cold as it looks while you're standing there. It was absolutely freezing. It was freezing, you know. But if you felt sorry for me, I really felt bad for Cody and and um. And Beagle laying around in those wet clothes and in those some of those conditions were really gruesome. But um, normally for me, when I get into character, I use music um, mm -hmm. of some sort. I you know depending on the type of character or the role, I take in certain types of music, certain different genres, mostly R and B, hip hop, the old school stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, for this this particular role, I had just experienced a death. A uh, good friend of mine, like a little brother to me. Mm -hmm. uh, he was gunned down and murdered in Newark, and the day of the my scenes was his funeral, wow. and I, um, I had to make the decision to stay and work as opposed to going to um, send him off, and it was just a it was a hard decision. I felt felt guilty, but um, I just decided to put that into the character. You know, ask the question why, you know, why did this good boy don't bother nobody? gets a bullet in his head on his way home, you know, why is the world like this, you know, so um, it just, it, it kind of, it made a very smooth transition to lend itself to the situation that the character was, was um, going through. Wow. Well, how much when you're acting you know, you were saying that you, you used your friend dying, which I can un understand that. How much of how much of when you act do you draw from what you've gone through? All the time, hundred mm -hmm. percent. You know, sometimes I, uh, <laughs> old Omar, he still he uh, lingers around somewhere up in my head. You know, um, you can only you can only pull from what you know to to breathe the reality into these characters that, that are given to you, that you were asked to play. At least that's what I believe, you know? And, um, you know, for dramatic actors, or at least for myself, the roles that I normally take are, you know, very dark. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a blessing for the accolades that people, when people see your work and they love it, you know, sometimes I, I wonder if people really realize that that state of mind that it takes to make these characters so lovable, so believable, is such a dark and, and, and ugly place mm -hmm. to have to sustain um, your mental, <clears throat> that it can really wear on your psyche and your emotional state. Yes, my birthday is not in June. That's all over the internet. Saul Williams and I are not blood brothers. Um, what else? <laughs> <laughs> When's your birthday? Let me get it right. Actually, November 22nd. I got one coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, what else did I hear on the end that was hogwash? Oh, God. Um, I don't really look at the internet much, but I know those two definitely stuck out. The birthday in June and the uh, Saul Williams and I being blood brothers. <laughs> Although I love Saul Williams. I think he's dope. I, I took that as a compliment, actually. The Williams Brothers <laughs> at a theater near you. There you <laughs> <laughs> cool. what, do you, what do you have coming up next? What are your next projects? Oh, man, I'm back at HBO. 
home box office. And um, we're doing a new, a new show called Boardwalk Empire. And, um, it's based on the 1920s. I mean, it's based on Atlantic City in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Scorsese is directing and producing. Whoa. Um, starring Steve Buscemi, who is amazing. I love Steve Buscemi. I love, that's a great dude, man. Yeah. That's a great dude. He cool as a fan. And um, Mike Pitt. Um, I can't remember everybody's names. It's a, you know, we just got back into into production, but um, it'll be out. I think it's fall of next year. I think it's going to be a good project. Now that's, but that's a that's going to be a film. No, not on no, TV. it's a television that's show. TV and Martin yeah. Scorsese. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? Whoa. I know. Yeah. That's a trip. Yeah, him, Tim Van Patten, uh, Mark Wahlberg, and and Dean Winters. They were all the producers. Wow. And, and and well, Tim and and Marty, they they're gonna be bouncing around directing here and there throughout the season. 